राधाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त Is it me who can't hear you, or something is wrong with me? Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, I was muted on this one. I'm so okay. sorry. Okay. Wow, thank you. So then, let's. Etava neva yogi na samakrani ha yogi na ha yuchyate abhi mato hi artho yad asangas tu krishna shaha. The greatest common understanding for all yogis is complete detachment. A matter which can be achieved by different kinds of yoga. So, purported by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Samishla Prabhupada, there are three kinds of yoga, namely Bhakti Yoga, Gyan Yoga, and Ashtanga Yoga. Yoga, yoga means to link to the Supreme, and there are three different ways by which we can do that: Gyan Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, and Bhakti Yoga. But the thing is, if we approach, we um. Adopt the process of Gyan Yoga. We have to come to the process of Bhakti Yoga to be able to get the fruit of the Gyan. Same with the Ashtanga Yoga. We may be following Ashtanga Yoga, but we have to come to Bhakti Yoga to get the fruit of the Ashtanga Yoga. So devotees, Gyanis, and Yogis all try to get out of the material entanglement. These are the three ways by which we want to get liberation, get perfection. Be situated on the platform of the soul. The gyanis try to detach the essential activities from material entanglement. The gyan yogi thinks that matter is false and the brahman is truth. This is what jagat mithya. What is that? Uh, brahman satya, uh, jagat mithya. This is what the gyani says that the only truth is the brahman, whereas the material world is false. Therefore, by cultivation of knowledge, he tries to detach the senses from material enjoyment. So the gyanis, they try to um, cultivate this knowledge. And so mind and sense control is needed. Any, and we, whether we do gyan yoga, we do ashtanga yoga or bhakti yoga, the control of mind and senses is the first thing that is, uh, that is needed. In the jnani is trying to, to detach his senses from the objects of the senses. Similarly, the Ashtanga yogis also try to control the senses. The devotees, however, try to engage the service in the uh, engage the senses in the service of the Lord. Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam Bhakti, Ochyate. Because the, the senses are very strong and very impetuous. So it's very difficult to control the senses by artificial means. But if we engage the senses in the service of Krishna, who's the master of senses, 
then automatically the senses are controlled. We don't need any extraneous endeavor to do that. Nothing extra is needed to do. Like for example, my, uh, to the tongue, we, we love to speak. If we speak about Krishna, so that we are not artificially stopping the tongue from speaking, but speaking about Krishna, so that's Bhakti Yoga. Automatically, the tongue is getting purified and is engaged also. So, uh, there appears that the activities of the bhaktas, yogis, are better than those of the jnanis and yogis. The mystic yogis simply try to control the senses by practicing the eight divisions of yoga, yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, pratyahar, etc. And the jnanis try by mental reasoning to understand that sense enjoyment is false. But the easiest and most direct process is to engage the senses in the service of the Lord. So, you know, we may try with our mental capacity, try to explain to the mind, okay, I can't engage in this sense gratification, it is bad, I'm going to control it. So, very few will be able to do it. Not many people will be able to do it. It's not easy. It's not easy. And then even the Ashtanga Yoga, it's a very difficult process for this Kali Yoga. So what are we going to do? We are ordinary people. We, we don't have qualifications. We, we don't have so much mind and sense control that we can explain to our mind or don't engage in this uh, sense gratification or we are not able to do the yam, niyam, asan things. So what do we do? We are given this easiest process of chanting the holy name in Kali Yoga. Chant the holy name, hearing about Krishna from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. Automatically our senses are engaged in the service of the Lord and we can get perfection. So it is the easiest and most direct process. Bhakti is the most direct process to engage our senses in the service of the Lord. The purpose of all yoga is to detach one's sense activities from this material world. The final aims, however, are different. Jnanis want to become one with the Brahman effulgence. Yogis want to realize Paramatma and devotees want to develop Krishna consciousness and transcendental loving service to the Lord. So each yoga, Jnan yogi, Ashtanga yogi, the Bhakti yogi, or each are trying to withdraw the senses from this matter. We are too attached to matter. And all these three types of yogis are trying to, um, to take away the, 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 they're trying to detach the senses from this matter. But the goal is different. The jnanis, their goal is to merge in the Brahma Jyoti, the light which is coming from the body of the Lord. The jnanis say that that is the perfection. The Ashtanga yogis, their perfection is that they want to see the Paramatma in the heart. And the Bhaktas, the Bhaktas, they want to develop Krishna consciousness. They want to enter into the spiritual planets, in the Vaikuntha planets, and over there face to face engage in loving service to the Lord. That loving service is the perfect stage of sense control. The senses are actually active symptoms of life and they cannot be stopped. So we may think that the senses are only for the body and so bhakti is a material process because the senses are with the body. <clears throat> but the real senses are with the soul. The spiritual body has spiritual senses. The soul has spiritual senses. That's the reason the material body has these senses. You know, if there's not, if the reality does not exist, the reflection will not be there. We stand in front of the mirror, so that's how our reflection is there in the mirror. So when we say that the senses have to be used in the service of the Lord, these senses, the soul has the senses, not this material body. This is the point we have to understand because many people think that bhakti is material. No, no. Bhakti begins from the liberated platform when one understands I'm a spirit soul. I'm eternal part and parcel of God. So the senses 
cannot be artificially stopped. They can be detached only if there is superior engagement, as it is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Param Drishtva Navartate. The activities of the senses can be stopped if they are given Sorry, superior Sorry, you just said, I just mm -hmm. have one question. So you just said that the soul has the senses, not the body. So when we feel, I'm sorry, um, like I'm sorry. You said Can the you soul repeat? has the, yeah. You said the soul has the senses. Yes. Right. So, so yes. the soul has, like, the soul has the desire to eat the prasadam. Soul has the desire to, then I, I mean, the desire in the sense that then the soul feels content when we engage in the service of Krishna. Is it like that? Because when we engage. We also have material senses, right? So they are different, yes. right? The soul has senses and the material senses are also there. That's right. right. Yes. Okay. The material senses, now that's what we are seeing. We, can, we are seeing with our material senses. But the soul has senses. Our spiritual body, we have senses in the spiritual body. Right now, mm. our, our soul is just in the form of a seed because it's inside this material body. But once we get liberation, then our spiritual form uh, will be fully developed, have spiritual senses. Okay. So uh, when we engage in bhakti, I remember you had asked one question one time that when we are engaging, suppose dancing for the Lord, again, and so we feel happiness, then we have to see the intention. Oh, oh am I dancing for the Lord? So if we are dancing for the Lord, then the happiness we feel is the transcendental happiness. Now, if I'm right. dancing uh, because I want to show that I'm such a great dancer and I'm feeling happy about it, so then that's not transcendental happiness. Or I'm dancing so that I can get the attention. You know how young boys and girls, they want to get attention of each other. If I'm going to do that, then that's not transcendental. So again, that means depends. that's not bhakti. That's not that's not bhakti, or that is still bhakti. Even if I'm dancing to show that how good I dance, it's not bhakti, yeah, or is it still bhakti? It is still devotional service, but it's in the modes. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, got it. It's in the mode of ignorance that I'm ignorant that I have to dance for Krishna. I don't know and if not it's for... ignorance. I don't know if it's ignorance or passion. It should be passion, passion. because okay, desire. Passion. Okay, okay desire, desire for recognition. Okay, you know? okay, got your point. Yeah, got your point. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So as it is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita Param Dhrishtva Nivartati, the activities of the senses can be stopped if they are given superior engagements. So artificially, you know, like Prabhupada used to give the example, there is a child, naughty child. How much can we shout at him and tell him, don't do anything? How long will the child sit and not do anything? You know, we'll keep on shouting and the child will just sulk there. But the minute we look away, he'll get up and start doing mischief again. Mm -hmm. But if we engage the child in something, then the child will become busy. We give him some toy to play with, some puzzle, give him some Play-Doh or something then he will be busy. Similarly, our senses are the same. If we engage them in the service of Krishna, then they are, they are occupied. They won't trouble us. But if we artificially try to restrain, then at one time or the other, they will retaliate. It's like, you know, some, um, some people, they say, okay, we are going to not talk. We are going to do mourn breath you know, for a certain number of days or certain number of time. But then after that time, they just want to continue talking and talking and talking because it is artificially restrained. Or someone will say, I don't want to talk, but then they type, you know. So, so the desire, the senses are active. They need engagement. And the supreme engagement is engagement of the senses in the service of the Lord. And that is the purpose of all yoga. So that's the point we have to understand that our real senses, the soul has the real senses and we need to engage in the service of Krishna. And that is real liberation, real perfection of life. Yes? 
So reading on 28, Jnana Mekam Para, Chinair Indriyar Brahma Nirgunam Ava Bhati Artha Rupena Bhantya Shabdadi Dharmina. Those who are averse to the transcendence realize the Supreme Absolute Truth differently through speculative sense perception. And therefore, because of mistaken speculation, everything appears to them to be relative. The Supreme Absolute Truth, the Personality of Godhead is one and He is spread everywhere by His impersonal feature. So the Brahman effulgence is everywhere. Everywhere, the spiritual world, the material world, everything is situated on this Brahman. And what is this Brahman? Is the light which is coming from the body of Krishna. This Brahman is called Krishna's impersonal feature. Even this material world is situated on the Brahman. There's nothing that is not situated on the Brahman. This material world is just that one tiny portion of the Brahman gets covered by a dark cloud called Mahatattva. And the material energy over there, the whole material creation takes place. So this is clearly expressed in Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna says, everything that is experienced is but an expansion of my energy. So everything belongs to Krishna. There is nothing that does not belong to Krishna. Everything is sustained by him, but that does not mean that he is in everything. So everything belongs to Krishna. Everything is Krishna's energy, but it doesn't mean that he's not a person in the sitting in Golok Vrindavan. He is still a person. Krishna is omnipresent, yet he is also personally present in Golok Vrindavan. He personally is not inside everything, but everything, uh, he is pervading everything by his impersonal feature of the Brahma Jyoti, of the Paramatma. But personally, where is he? He's in Golok Vrindavan, in the spiritual world. Sense perception, such as oral perception of the sound of a drum, visual perception of a beautiful woman, or perception of the delicious taste of a milk preparation by the tongue, all come through different senses and are therefore differently understood. Therefore, sensory knowledge is divided in different categories, although actually everything is one as a manifestation of the energy of the Supreme Lord. So we have different senses which um, help us to perceive different sense objects. Ears, by ears, we are able to hear the music of the drum. By, by our eyes, we are able to see the form. Or by the tongue, we are able to taste. And so we can see that how all these different senses, they give us the different kinds of knowledge. Therefore, sensory knowledge is divided in different categories, although actually everything is one as a manifestation of the energy of the Supreme Lord. So sound, there is sound, there is form, there is touch. We are experiencing these different things, but they all belong to Krishna. All, it's all Krishna's energy. Similarly, the energies of fire and our heat and illumination and by these two energies, fire can display itself in many varieties or in diversified sense perception. Mayavadi philosophers declare this diversity to be false. Manveshna philosophers do not accept the different manifestations as false. They accept them as non-different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead because they are a display of his diverse energies. So it's not false. You know, we are seeing so many things it's not that these are false. It's not that we are not seeing them or we are eating food. We are actually eating the food. It's not false. Or when we are hearing, we are able to hear. It's not false. But the material world is temporary. That is what we need to understand. That it's not false, but it is temporary. It's one of the energies of Krishna. That's how we can perfectly understand and that's the Vaishnava Vaishnav explanation. The philosophy that the absolute is true and this creation is false. Brahma, Satya, Jagan, Mithya is not accepted by Vaishnava philosophers. 
the example is given that although all that glitters is not gold, this does not mean that a glittering object is false. For example, an oyster shell appears to be golden. This appearance of golden hue is due only to the perception of the eyes, but that does not mean that the oyster shell is false. So this is what we have to understand. You know, if we say that oh, only Brahman is true and this material world is false, we are not able to understand the absolute truth. Absolute truth has various energies and this material world is also one of its energy. This material creation is one of the energies of Krishna. So we are right now here inside this body. Now, thinking we are the body, that is false. You know, forgetting that I am the soul, that is the illusion. But we are very much right now inside this body. We cannot say, oh, I am not in this body right now. We are. Prabhupada is giving the example that oyster shell may appear to be golden, but it doesn't mean the oyster shell is not there. It is still there. We are able to see it. Similarly, by seeing the form of Lord Krishna, one cannot understand what he actually is, but this does not mean that he is false. The form of Krishna has to be understood as it is described in the books of knowledge, such as Brahma Samhita. So the form of Krishna, form of Krishna, you know, we think that this is a material form. Krishna's form is material, it is false. No. We need to hear from the scriptures to understand the, Krishna's form, the quality of Krishna's form, Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma's prayers. He says, Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vikraha. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, has an eternal, blissful spiritual body. This is what we have to understand. We cannot, just because we can't understand something, we can't say, oh, it is false. Or because I can't understand it, it is false. Or because I can't understand it, it is wrong. No, no, then that we are being childish, you know, like how children say, oh, because I can't understand it, 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 it it's not, doesn't exist. No. Krishna's form is transcendent. Sat, Jit, Ananda, eternal, blissful spiritual body. By our imperfect sense perception, we cannot understand the form of the Lord. We have to acquire knowledge about him. So we cannot see the form of the Lord with our imperfect senses. Our eyes, we have material senses right now. How can we see something spiritual with the material senses? We cannot. So our senses are imperfect. We are in illusion. We make mistakes and we have tendency to cheat. So how will we get perfect knowledge? We need to hear. We need to hear from the scriptures through the lips of the pure devotees. Therefore, it is said here, Jnana Mekam, Bhagavad Gita confirms that they are fools who simply upon seeing Krishna consider him a common man. Krishna says to Arjuna and Bhagavad Gita, Avajananti maam mudha manushim tanum ashritam. Krishna says to Arjuna, O oh Arjuna, fools deride me when I descend in this human form. So thinking that Krishna is a human being, ordinary human being, is foolishness. Krishna is deriding. Krishna is saying we are foolish if we think that. They do not know the unlimited knowledge, power, and opulence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we have to try to understand that God, Krishna, he has unlimited knowledge. He has unlimited power, omnipotent, He's omnipotent. He has all these opulences. We are not able to understand him by our material mind, but it does not mean that he does not exist. It does not mean that he does not have these potencies. We need to hear about him from the devotees to be able to understand him. Material sin speculation leads to the conclusion that the Supreme is formless. It is because of such mental speculation that the conditioned soul remains in ignorance under the spell of illusory energy. So if, you know, if, we, if we say that I'm going to not hear from the authority, 
but I'm just gonna depend on my mind and some words, you know, just some words um, which sound very good. And I'm gonna use my mind to try to understand the absolute truth. We won't be able to because Maya is very strong. Her illusion is very strong. We cannot get out of her illusion. Krishna says that only those who surrender to me can very easily cross beyond it. So if we are just going to use, depend on our material mind to get out of the material world, then it's a very, very, very difficult task. It may take lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. But if we take shelter of Krishna, the same material energy, it becomes like a tiny the water contained in the hoofprint of a calf. The whole material ocean, it um, condenses into a tiny puddle of water and we can easily cross beyond it. So surrender to Krishna begins by chanting Hare Krishna, by hearing about Krishna from Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. And so we are encouraged to continue doing that. And we'll stop here for today. The purport is still longer. Did anyone have anything to add or comment? Not to add or comment, but yeah, that the sen the soul is soul also has senses. This is like maybe yeah. So like on that level to raise up to that level to the spiritual level, like right now we are doing things on the material level. That's right. Yeah. Yes. To raise up to that. Yeah. So that will yes, be only we, when we have the self-realization, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. We have each, the soul has a spiritual form. It's a spiritual yeah. senses. Yes. That's why there is form here in the material world. That's why there is senses here in the material world. Yeah. Because the origin is all in the spiritual world. Like how this material and spiritual world is that I also heard in one of the lectures that the women, what we think, it is our material body. But actually we are not men or women as a soul. Right? That's right. That's right. The because we, women, these are bodies of the body. That's right. Yeah. That is the material conception. That's right. Yes. That I am yes. a woman. No, I'm not doing good. Like, you know, somebody is uh, pressurizing me or I'm, I don't have rights. But that is all materially that we're talking. It has nothing That's to right. do with spirituality. That's right. Because we are the soul and there is no differentiation of male or female when we are soul. That's right. Soul is all Prakriti, female. Yeah, Purusha is, is Krishna. Yeah. The only Purusha is Krishna and we are all his energy. So yes, our thinking that I'm male and female, it's only related to the body. This is all Upadhis relating to the body. But, you, but we are actually all souls. Yes. Thank you. So Thank we'll you. stop here Thank for today. Thank you. Thank you so much for adding these wonderful points. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shlapa Upad ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vinda ki jai, Hare Krishna.